right, welcome back. Day two of the Tactical Vest Mods. My apologies, I did not think about uh, recording previously. Also, I don't know which part this is going to fit into the final edit and review. But since I'm in the process of doing the modification, I thought I would do a little bit of a memento style uh, edit, review, video, tutorial, whatever you want to call it. So I'll probably explain it another point in the video, but we might as well get it out of the way as well. Had another plate carrier before, wouldn't hold large enough plates. Sent it back because it's super expensive. This one, which I will later uh, bring up a proper uh, link and or photos and names, but I want to get on this. Spent a lot of time so far, so I want to get it done. Um, but like 65, 70 bucks for this plate carrier. Did not have the quick detach links. Got the one Tigris attachments that have Velcro on one side and a, uh, what do you call it, Molly clip style on the other. So here's the, oh, that one popped up at the top. So Velcro patch, got your uh, one clasp here, one Tigris. Once was like this, and thread through the molly. I ended up Frankenstein in this bad boy. Took my uh, Leatherman knife, cut in here to expose this webbing, being very careful not to cut the webbing up because that would really make it difficult to get to it, uh, get it attached. So I took that off, kept the Velcro and the hook loop because this is where I want it. So I have the hook and loop uh, set up on the interior vest. Um, so the original, other side. Oh wait, no, this is on the vest. Ah, my bad, jumping around a little bit on you. So that Velcro used to be right here, the part that snaps onto here because it didn't have these attachments. So when you attach this bad boy on here, I'll use this end as an example. So the one tigress would be here. This clip would be right here. So then it would attach right over here on either end, you know, match up the left one with the left one, right one with the right. So since this part was basically more like this. So the Velcro would slap underneath this part and attach. The only adjustments were, would be made on the rear side, which had bungee cord. This is stretchy as well, which I also modify. We'll get over that later. Um, but here, so in order to have this going on, you have all this extra Velcro pretty much just like that. So the only way to really get it out of the way is to fold it underneath. Well, one Tigress did not come with another strap that would loop all the way around this thing and hold that extra Velcro strap in place. So what I ended up doing, uh, one of the first mods was to cut off the Velcro, not cut off completely, you know, like snip, 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 but I actually took out my um, thread cutting tool. I don't know the proper terminology. Got this a long time ago. Oh, something like that melted off. Velost or Velostar sewing kit. Really simple thing. I think it was maybe like 10 bucks. Bunch of different threads, ne uh, different needles, buttons, measuring tape, scissors, and these things are really handy for um, getting your thread started. But uh, yeah, before I get drifting off too much. So yeah, this little thread cutting tool, that little protector here, you can loop this underneath your thread. Where's that camera lens? There we go. Get that underneath your thread and the part right here is semi-sharp. So you do have to be careful not to cut your webbing or anything you don't want to cut because it will cut right through. But going through one thread stitch at a time and just going through and yeah, 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 all the way down the sides and top until you can just kind of peel it off. And then once it gets kind of stuck, go in on the side, chop some more, pull, pull, chop, 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 pull, chop and repeat until the whole thing came off and I pulled all the excess thread out of it. Cause you know me, I scavenge every, or salvage everything every when you might need it. So I might be using these later on. Oh, there's the bungee strap, <laughs> got stuck on there. So, bouncing around a little bit on you there. Did quite a bit of work last night. Was up late, tired. So this flap that you can see here, I folded over once that uh, Velcro was off. Since the Velcro also had stitching here, you might be able to see the X, there's the X pattern right there. So you can see it was like right here. And since it had a decent fit, but not a great fit, even when folded over, I would have had to pull this strap further back on the uh, molly panel. And I'm like, well, then I'm losing real estate here. So once this was, uh, the Velcro was cut off, made sure to come back up at the corners and do a few passes through and loop over, make sure these corners are nice and sturdy so the thread doesn't start unraveling around the sides. What I also did was stitch, restitch this uh, flap because if it's like, you know, folded up, this would be just dangling. So I stitched here, stitched along, oh wait, yeah, stitched here in the corners for sure. Then realized since if this is how it's facing up, it has a pouch here, I thought it'd be nifty just to stitch a little pouch here. So I only stitched one side, or actually the bottoms, uh, bottom flap side, stitched that close. So now, you know, I can stick maybe an extra mag or some uh, chem lights or whatever. So it has a nice little extra pouch right there. So that's for the front part that was like this. Disconnected this part from the one tigress saving these because you never know when they might come in handy and then i once this was all stitched up in here 
I stitched on the uh, one tigress attachment onto the uh, molly on the outside. I was trying to think of different ways to make it attach even better. One thought was to have um, this one on the outside and this one on the in inside, or this one on the inside, this one on the outside. But I thought that might cockeye the uh, attachment slightly to a point where it might not sit right. So I said, screw it, and did a triple stitch. And this is actually one of the last parts I did last night after, you know, planning, cutting, all that stuff. So it doesn't look that wonderful. Uh, but I did multiple rows. So that way it's nice and secure since this part's gonna be pulled and tugged down a lot. I wanna make sure it's dug. Um, one option would have been to stitch it through when this flap is already up, find out where I wanted it. So that way I passed through one part of the material. I did a double pass through the material. If I did a single pass, that would have made this pouch just slightly bigger, maybe by half an inch or a little less than half an inch because of the stitching. So that's one option if you're going this route or whatever. <laughs> um, another option for this stitching here, um, I went through both sides and it was actually really tricky because I wanted to get a solid thread all the way up. I was having to try to feed the needle underneath this uh, molly webbing, go through, up, out, and then kind of keep it in order and in line. It's tricky not to be able to see it. They have to angle the needle up and out and stuff like that. So just looking at it right now, if I would have gave a little extra room on this fold and had it go up a little bit, I could have had the edge right here between two of the uh, molly points and just had my thread go through this thread and not have to try to do a fight and stuff. It might be a little tricky getting through that thick coarse thread because they did stitch the crap out of this uh, molly webbing, it looks like, which is awesome. It's going to last longer that way. But it might be hard to get the needle through, but that's just kind of an afterthought while, you know, doing this with you, talking about it. So uh, let me try to recap. Got this on, stitch that. Um, oh, yeah. Once I pull off the Velcro, the um, molly straps were loose because the Velcro was threaded on it, kind of covered a portion of it. So I ended up stitching this first, actually, trying to lay it flat so the molly webbing would sit flat and uh, bulge a little bit, or at all, hopefully. Then, you know, double, triple stitch these on since these are a uh, corner point. Then fold it over, did my final... Uh, interior and bottom stitch, depending on how you want to go that route. So that is one side. I did that also on the other side. And you can see I went through a lot of thread. So I went from using black thread to brown thread and then a little uh, Halloween pattern uh, orange thread since I didn't want to wait to get new thread in the mail. And this is cotton thread. I did find on Amazon they actually have nylon, th uh, yeah, nylon thread. So hopefully that will arrive soon, which would be stronger. There's a bunch of options out there. So Check the reviews on others to get something that's going to not fray on you and be crap because apparently some people were saying there's a lot of crap ones out there but uh i will find out when that stuff arrives the other thing i did do uh was i cut out the stitching on the bungee that is on the back where you thread through your bungee cord to cinch it down or make it more loose depending on how um how much width around your body you need if you're skinnier or fatter or whatever make it more tight or loose while this was fully cinched, I had to fully cinch it down and it wasn't fitting how I wanted. And this bungee is really freaking stretchy. So you get a lot of freaking give, which is good and bad, depending on the size of you and how tight or loose you want it. For me, it was way too loose. And when I tried cinching it down and pulling, this side actually would pop out of the rear enclosure. So the rear enclosure is just this uh, almost like kangaroo pouch style. So I would stretch, this would pop out here and then get caught and then kind of bunch up and be very freaking annoying so i did not like that and i couldn't cinch it down tight enough so these were actually more like i would say that far out so maybe two inches yeah, two or three inches out further than what it is now so when i cut the stitching to free this point and uh worked out pretty nicely getting it out i also decided you know what i'm going to stitch the corners the top the bottom keep the thread from uh, unraveling and opening it up and then made it into a little pouch so thankfully, the way I took it out or took off the stitching, I was able to just get the stitching off of this from the outside so that the original stitching for the uh, pouch or for the uh, cummerbund is still there untouched. So it's not going to unravel on this side. So that saved me a lot of sewing since I don't have a sewing machine that I trust because the other one's ancient and I don't remember how to use it. So I had to do all this by hand. So for this back part, I, this was the last part I did last night, way too late, getting zeroed in. I had to kind of open up the pouch, thread through, try to keep it nice and uh, stable where it was, I guess I should have used some uh, clothes pins and then, you know, pinned it to keep it in place so it didn't get cockeyed, I think. Yeah, this one last night, uh, I didn't notice that it started getting a little cockeyed on me. It's not going to affect me too bad. It's a little angle. And I still got to modify it more. But actually, you can see with the orange one, I should have started off with this one. Now you can see all my freaking crazy threads. And this is, uh, these threads were when I was getting tired and my hands were sore, my eyes were tired, and my brain was tired. So I stitched up there. So I opened up the pouch here, actually from the backside, so I can see where I was going. And then I had to feed the needle through, pull out, make sure I don't get it bunched up. 
which is really annoying. So when you do, if you're new to sewing and stuff like that, when you have your thread and it's going through, you really want to guide the excess thread as it's going through. Otherwise it'll bunch up and pull weird and make these little like rat nest um, bunches like that. And then you lose a lot of thread. You can have loose hoops within your thread patch. So after each stitch, you want to go back, so make sure it's all the way through. Just a little tug, make sure it's tight. Got that rat nest. Get something, I don't know, like a pencil or another needle. If you use something like this, you got to be careful so you don't go too far down and cut it. Kind of like you know, pull the thread out, try to get it re, make the ends even to your end of the thread. Because I do a double loop thread style. Because I do. <laughs> um, makes the uh, thread stain easier than doing a single uh, piece of thread. Then just kind of wiggle it up. Giggle until it's nice and even again, feed through, so that way you save thread. You don't get a pull and pop your thread out, or those little uh, rat nests, I like to call them. So yeah, I thought this length was going to be good on both sides, since it, uh, a lot of the material's in, uh, inside this pouch. And I was wrong. I need it even tighter, because I like this thing not to be loose and sloshing around. And I'm not a huge fan of the secondary buckles. I'd rather have my cummerbund set to the size I want it to be, have it snug, not have to go clip this and then toss the cummerbund on. And yeah, I want to... Less things take less time to put on and take off. Oh, that's right. So I wanted to make this like that. So now it turns into a cummerbund that you can fit a soft armor in, which is actually the theory, but I don't have anything to test that out. Uh, six inch steel plates do not fit in here. You need at least, I think, five or five and a half inch. I'll have to measure later for you. Um, I could not get the, uh, the steel plates in there, which was one reason why I wanted the pouch, so I can fit my steel plates in there and not have to worry about using this pouch. I got six by eight, so it'd be a nice, uh, good width separating the front and the back. I'm not good side coverage, but since it won't fit, at least now I got a nice little uh, storage compartment. Or if I end up getting soft plates or travel pads in here, I can slap those in there. And I decided to do on the back side since this will be tied up, it'll be in the back, stuff won't fall out. Um, later on, I might, I'm debating on the design right now if I want to stitch hook and loop Velcro on the bungee and then to the interior or just on the sides of the, or uh, both sides of the bungee. And the exterior just two sections to close up so that way the bungee still has that stretch and my velcro won't move and tear and just pop off because this thing's stretching so hopefully i remembered everything that i modified so far um there was a lot i didn't plan on making a video on this one because i was just so zeroed in i'm like okay i already spent 60 70 bucks on this thing all these other cummerbunds that i was looking at that i really like the design don't know how they fit and work because i don't have them were like between 100 to 250 dollars so I'm like, well, you know what? I'm crafty. I like to fabricate and modify stuff to fit my needs. So I thought, screw it. If I can make this, because the whole thing, whole plate carrier, all this stuff was roughly, you know, 65, 75 bucks. I can't remember exactly. If I muff this up, it's not a huge loss. And I can go with the, uh, the pre-made from another company. Or I could get another cheap one similar and then try another design and still be saving money if I get it right the first time. But, you know, I enjoy doing stuff like this. So... All right, welcome back to segment two on the uh, cummerbund slash plate carry modification. So partially, so I remember what I'm trying to do later on, I can review this and let you know my train of thoughts. So to recap, this section of bungee elastic whatevers uh, on both sides makes it two loops for me because this is a single point, the back has to be our adjustments. I did find out just a moment ago that that actually opens up and this Velcro that folds up like this. That is a freaking awesome design right there. So this will actually hold six by eight side plates. Like, so, oh yeah. So that was one of the conundrums I was like, okay, I'm gonna put Molly on the interior, take off this pouch, do something else. Anyway, didn't want to have to get anything extra. I already had these. So I gotta stay on track before I lose my train of thought. So my thought is the easiest way right now to get this in further in hopes to make it still adjustable and still utilize this bungee while not sacrificing and making uh, my life harder having to do a lot of stitching. But it does look like I have to do a bunch more stitching if I want to make life semi-easier, but a little more tedious. So I don't like having to feed the needle in here, trying to look, feel, push, pull, possibly get it um, cock out again like this one. So to motivate myself, I'm like, well, you know, this stitching's not that great. It's at a weird angle. I should redo it anyway. All right. So I'm going to take off this stitching. Sadly, I hate having to redo and restitch because that was a lot of thread, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of a pain in the ass. I really wish I had a freaking sewing machine that could run this stuff. So, I'll, actually what I'll do is I have to take off this thread here and this amount of thread here so I can separate these two completely then take off all my stitching I did here. And my goal is to get this section segment here either, actually I just, just dawned on me right now because there is so much freaking stretch. There's like, well I should actually measure that in a second. Huh. 
light bulb. Um, a lot of stretch measure, how much stretch there is, find out how much room I need, and then that will give me a better idea on placement on here. What just came to mind is I kept thinking of keeping all this ex exposed, you know, out here. But I have all this new room to play with internally on this pouch. So if I cut this stitching, I might have to go further down to make it easier to stitch this on. But I can actually make this recessed inside the pouch to where I can still thread my string through it here and have a lot more room for play on making it tighter or looser. The so I guess the max amount, so just for reference, if I thread both these through, I can find out how much loop I need to be able to still tie it, however. So I could technically go as far in as I want with these, as long as I can still loop this through and tie it. So that way I can go as wide as I want or as tight as I want, dependent on the string and how far I go in, I think. Kind of. There will be limitations to how far or how tight. Actually, not how tight. If I go all the way in, it'll be tight as all hell. I won't have any uh, side left. So, that's my next step of, from where I am right now, measure how much stretch this has. I'll attach these two as tight as I can at this point, so I know my full tightness with these two um, bound together. Actually, no. If I do it separate like this, and measure the stretch from the side of the carrier to the tip here, I'll know exactly my max amount of stretch between the two things, and then by attaching these two like here, put the carrier on, measure how much slack. That, that part is gonna be really tricky doing solo. I might have to get a hand to do that. But I can see how much tighter I need the darn thing. Once I know how much stretch I can get on both sides, I can subtract what I need to make it tighter and probably add two or three inches so I can make it even more tighter and give that little room of play so that way I won't have to redo this again because I already have my measurement factors, my stretch factors, and where I want to be in between in order to make my tightest adjustment. And then since there's so much play with the string, I can make it plenty more loose since right now it's too loose already. I won't have to go that much more loose because there's lots of string. And the primary goal for the max um, stretchiness and width is to at least keep, that's probably easier to see for you, at least keep one full row of webbing inside this back pouch at its max stretchiness and extended capability so it won't stretch any further and pull these edges outside this pouch and get caught up and hung up. And if, you have, if you're running soft uh, armor right here, you're not gonna lose any of that side protection because it pops out. Now you got a nice little gap from the uh, uh, soft armor. But then again, if you only go here to where your plate is, you still have all that coverage from your plate, just not the double soft plus plate. The only issue would be if you pull actually past where the armor is, then you have that gap which, uh, you know, is that little part of protection. All right, so that's where I my mind is now. My next goal, more measuring, more thread cutting, and more threading to be done. But I can see the end of the tunnel, or the light at the end of the tunnel, which is awesome. And hopefully all this time and effort will prove to be a well-done project. But hey, I enjoy doing this crap. And if it at least even helps one person figure out how they can modify and adjust their stuff to make it the best fitting, I, most ideal setup for them without having to spend a ton of money or even if you have a you know $500 carrier and it just isn't sitting right and this can help out I'll be happy so all right I'll be back soon Alrighty, back again so as a reminder for myself and to show you what I did to figure out my next step in the sizing what I first did was try to find my measuring tape again so I had somebody actually hold actually that'll be the next step so hold the tape measure I stretched one side gripping here and say here and stretch the velcro or the elastic part out to see how much stretch from this side of the cummerbund to the end of the eyelet section here so that gave me six inches of stretch from where my current elastic is stitched on here to the other end so knowing i had six inches here six inches here of stretch from these things i know that well i get six extra inches of stretch where it pulls super tight where it won't pull anymore so I put everything back on, put the cone band back on through, and I stitched <clears throat> like so to hold them together, overlapping. I also measured that from the end of the uh, cone, or the eyelet section to the, uh, um, sorry, lose my train of thought. Um, <clears throat> whatever this is called, nylon, cone band. It's about two inches. This section right here is about one inch. So the overall stretch loses, or diameter loses one inch, which actually I just thought of now. I gotta go back to my calculations because there's one inch less material than having them 
like so. So that'd be a total of one inch or a half inch for both sides of stretchiness or extension lost while doing it this way. I put everything back on, grabbed the sides of the cummerbund and stretched them as far as I could over the plate carrier. So on the front, I was actually able to stretch the sides to where they met right in the center line here. So measuring from my center line to my clips where they'd attach is about six inches, which, hey, you have six inches of stretch. So it makes sense that they would pull six inches inward onto the vest, which kind of confirms our measurements during the stretch tests also. So that means I have six inches that I want to go away or eliminate. So that way, uh, when the tight the fitting is really tight and snug, I know that I need to lose those six inches. So when I pull super tight, when these two things are looped together, that's going to be super snug, super tight on my fitment for the cummerbund. Now, my previous, that would be the max snugness I would get if I were to move or take away six inches on both sides of stretchiness. So with that said, it would be going inward six inches. I have two inches exposed right now. So if I move from this position in, it would be four inches of webbing under here would give me, um, move that back four inches. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Basically, I gotta move this point six inches back. So technically, here's six inches. Here, I took off two inches of this beam, since this is exposed, that mean I just need to pull this back four inches, which would give me a total of six. Because two exterior, that would be from two in. You know what? I think I'm overthinking it a little bit. Basically, I gotta move this point back six inches. So, while showing you and thinking out loud to y'all, or myself at this point, that's a conundrum right there. That's, that's interesting thinking. So, moving this point here back six inches, I need these eyelets to be right about in the middle of this webbing. So that's where this would meet here on the interior. The back of this elastic would be somewhere up in here. So at least that's a good point of visualization where I can actually kind of uh, mark, label, I want this part to be <clears throat> wherever the end of this Velcro or the, the, the elastic band is in here. That's where it's stitched in as long as this corner edge is right here or technically where these eyelets are because that's the center point would be right here. So that will give us the exact amount of stretch to make it super tight or make it pretty tight for how it was before with the given amount of uh, flexibility we got. If I want to go tighter, I could move that even back two more inches and then the string, I could thread up how it's supposed to be normally would then give me another two inches of tighter play. If I want it even more tight, um, I could do it that way. But with the additive property, two and two, we'd actually have four inches of tight tightness play. Two on one side, two on the other, cinch up. So, of overall circumference, I should say. But yeah, two and two on both sides. Um, which is nice, because it's always good to have a little wiggle room when um, you don't know if you're gonna get bigger, smaller, whatever. Plenty of play going tighter, and lots of play to make it loose. All right, welcome back. This is another uh, step in the process. So I have removed the elastic that I did the stitching on before, took off this pouch that was on the uh, side, and now have my cummerbund exposed. Um, check out the stitching. So this comes in really handy, the little uh, thread, thread cutter tool, getting up on an edge, making sure to keep things separated and just kind of clean and cut, peel apart, cut, cut, cut. What I did find out after a while was that if I were to use these little thread shears, which are nice and sharp and a nice little angle and then pretty thin, I could do a little snip snip and try to save some of the threads like you can see right there. All these threads going around, but still are all the way through. So that means I can do a little, a little trick when you're dealing with nylon thread. You can either use a propane lighter like this or butane lighter, a little torch style or a regular lighter. Um, I got my windows open right now. Probably want to do it outside or a garage with an open door or whatever. It's cold today. I'm feeling a bit lazy. That's the uh, cut off sleeves and doing this in the room right now. But uh, so you got the um, these little fine threads after cutting. So now we just try to get a good angle without giving a crutch shot. <laughs> a little torch and just very gently and semi quickly because you don't want to burn the whole thing. Go like so. And you can kind of see the. Uh, little loose threads melting into place. So I'll do a little down here, get a little heat on there, and then with gloves, pinch down. So now you can see it actually melts back onto the fabric and it saves those threads. So since I'm trying to 
keep this flap, basically keep this flap folded over. Um, doing that along all the edges. Did that with the pouches as well. So that way, because they were uh, stitched on and one of these rows of threads were actually thrown through onto here. So they stitched one, one row, I believe on the interior and then one on the exterior to attach it to here. So now I have, um, I don't have to re-thread along this, it's nice and secure. And then later when I re-thread it on there, re-stitch it, it'll be triple thread. So even more added strength. So basically that's a little tip when you have those exposed threads, instead of pulling them off, uh, once you get it down to where you want, just singe them on both sides, makes a nice secure uh, or more secure than it would be um, without a row of threads and saves you one more go around with your uh, needle and thread when you're ready to attach stuff. So the next step I'll be doing is figuring out, okay, that's the inside, it's my little pouch. Measure it down, find out how far in. I remember we did six, or saying six inches. I had two here. I'm just gonna move it all the way back six inches inside the carrier and only stitch on one side on the inside. So that way I still have a pouch if I want soft armor in there. And once that's into place, then I can stitch my sides again and what I should do as well is figure out what placement I want this. So if I'm stitching this, or stitching the sides, I can actually place this back on where I want it and then just stitch the top and the bottom and I'll save me having to go back over and replace this later on. So yeah, stitch once and save some time. I'm gonna get back to it and see you on the next update. So I had another epiphany. Since this point to that point, well, what I'm caring about attaching up to here and here. <clears throat> so I got this, uh, fabric measuring tape and decided to measure around my waist, which is about 39 inches, but then realized, well, the plate carrier, I don't have these 12 inches of space that is gonna connect onto here. So if one way to find out how tight you want it would be to measure around your waist and then take off whatever length between the clips are, and that would kind of give the full length of the cummerbund for how long it would be to be perfectly super snug around your waist. But then again, you do have to factor in a little bit of um, material that the cummerbund is wrapped around in order to get a you know perfect um, super cinch down tight. So that would be the smallest I'd want to go would be about 27 inches. As you can see here, the whole cummerbund assembly is quite a bit larger than that. I think roughly around, I think it was 36 inches. Uh, I forgot to put the tripod up. Actually, one sec. All right, there we go. In the spirit of trying to get this figured out and get back to it, as well as preserve the thoughts on this film right here. Um, didn't put the camera on the tripod. All right, so where was I? Overall length at this point was about, yeah, it was 33 inches. For mine to be super snug, I needed down to 27. So there's a few options. Right now I haven't laid out, I haven't done the stitching yet, but I thought since I've been running into little hitches here and there, to look at it at different angles, to try to figure out, okay, what's gonna work, one and done. If it's tight, I can always use a string to cinch it up. If it's too loose, then I have to remodify. So in this case, tighter is better. I do have the fabric under here. I was kind of measuring in. So before, previously I said uh, six inches in, here's my eyelets. I made a little mark here, which is if this was all the way back six inches, or if I have a bottom here, it's gonna be able to stretch six inches, actually stretch six inches from this point out. And then, oh, same with this one, from this, this point, stretch out six more inches. So at this point, that would be, let's do some uh, rough math here. So. That's about two inches inward if I had it right there. So that means it would be stretching four inches longer than uh, what it previously was. Well, actually four inches um, out of the cummerbund, or this would stretch out four inches outside of the cummerbund. So that'd be four inches extra length, where right now I want 27, we're already at 33, so 34, 35, 35, 35. So that'd be about 37 inches, which is, Way more than my 27. So the reason why I bring that up is after doing the measuring, um, so you'd want to measure your torso yourself, uh, I'd say from the chest and your stomach, depending on what type of plates you have soft armor, it would form to your body more so you find your largest or and your smallest, see how you want to cinch it up. In my case, I have hard plates, so I want it will kind of bow out. I cinch up to the gut, depending on if I get a you know a bigger belly than my chest mentions later on. So I want to get this cinched down nice so it will stay um, nice and tight on me and then I also have the adjustments. So my conundrum now is to either um, fold some of the webbing material inward to make kind of a pouch or something like even say two inches here that way everything gets cinched butt to butt with the molly webbing while still be um, hidden underneath the cover on the rear 
So that way when it stretches out, it doesn't get caught on the edges and cause binding. The other thought would be, which would suck to have to cut thread again, would be to try to move these clips in a bit further, which would give me a little overlap on this pouch section into the carrier behind our clips. So in a perfect world, the maximum amount of extra I'd want would be the amount that would be pushing right behind here. Molly Webb would go in here, my clip would slide down. So even if I, I had um, soft plates, I'd have that full coverage behind the clip, possibly, as in theory. Actually, in my case, I wouldn't. Since I did the fold and stitched, any soft plate is gonna stop at the stitching. So with that said, I might need to go back, if I wanna go that route, to have soft plate full uh, length of the cummerbund, I'd have to take off this stitch, modify my inner pocket, so that way the um, soft armor can go all the way up to this end, have the clips back a little bit, and the soft armor would go in here, and depending on how long the uh, soft armor is, would have full soft coverage along the side. So that's one thing to think about. If you're doing a similar thing, if you're doing the fold, you might have to get a little tricky with your stitching. I really wish I knew that eventually I'd have to separate this whole thing. It would have made more sense if I separated the two halves completely apart and then stitch these in, figure out my placement, figure out my length. I want an open end in the back, open end in the front. So if you are planning to do something similar to this, you want to put these clips on, yours is too long, you want to shorten it up, you want to uh, take these off, shorten them up, or take off a pouch, add a pouch to save yourself some time and re-stitching. I would say you will have to do a lot of stitching, but instead of having to go back and forth, check, 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 I would just start off by separating the two halves. Just completely take off the stitching, and we have your two pieces. You can figure out, okay, do I want a molly pouch on the in or do I want to add molly on the inside? Do I want to stitch it a pouch on the inside? Or add something to the outside permanently and with these clips. That way you can have it open. Say you want a pouch on the inside. Bam, slap that sucker there, and I can stitch it right to here and still have your inner pouch. So sometimes it's better to go down to bare materials, that way you have more flexibility and range on what and how you want to complete your project. So if you want to start from scratch cummerbund, that's what I'd do. Um, after trial and error all this time, just getting that thought out, would be to just take off, take off the Velcro, take off, or even, honestly, now I think about it, the Velcro, yeah, you'd have to take off the Velcro because in order to get these stitches off and separate this pouch uh, or separate it, you'd have to take off the Velcro, which isn't bad. If you want to put the Velcro back on, you can see where the holes are. So all you got to do is get your needle and thread and just follow the whole pattern. Just go the whole way and make it really nice and tight, almost like it was brand new. So that's pretty nifty. I can't see you. Um, <laughs> I think I'm getting a little tired. I should eat something soon. All right. So with that said, a little more modification to do. Bring you along for the journey. This is probably going to be a long video. My apologies, but at least it's going to be nice and thorough give you all the pros and cons and some ideas and hopefully I can chop this all up to make it more streamlined for you and give you all the good tidbits and my little stuff. But um, I might even have an option at the end to chop the tidbits up or you have the whole thing as well so you can see the thought process of A, B, C, D, see all the options and let you make a good informed decision on what you want to do. So I believe what really sucks but might be necessary for my goals is I got to take the clips back off, take out all my old, all my new old stitching or old new stitching that I've done give myself two fresh strips panels. All right, I'm back. <laughs> so I remeasured, put on the vest, did the tape without the plates just to get like the, you know, the tightest I can get without the plates. So I get a good reference of how small I would require it to be right now. So it's about 30 inches going around to the clips. So measured that out, but I realized that a lot of soft armor inserts are roughly 15 inches as well. So I have to think of, I'm gonna close the uh, two flaps in order to open them, close them again for everything to fit in. And let me pan this down a little bit here. There we go. So I also made extra room here in the front so that the, if I put soft armor in there, it'll match up and overlay slightly with the uh, main plate carrier. So that way there's no gap in between the clip. So if the clip gets hit, I'm not getting hit uh, from the side. So I ended up measuring how far in the uh, vest need, or the uh, cummerbund needs to go in and then lined up where my clip would attach onto the other side attached to the vest and then figured out where to mount the uh, outer clip that clips onto the vest. So I know I have, um, I think it was roughly an inch previously, oh yeah, an inch from the uh, outer clasp. So I knew, okay, my clasp is in here, it matches and I have the X or extra pushing in there. So that gives me that little extra room in the plate, but, or to the plate, but I got my 15 inch long in the back, so I have it nice and snug. And that was it. 
once it's squeezed down, it has some clips in there right now. Um, I have about a quarter inch. I can make a strip of Velcro, close it up, depending on how I do that with the uh, bungee. If I use the bungee or use Velcro, I put it on. I do like the bungee idea because it gives it that little extra squeeze. So if um, you want it super tight, it conf um, conforms to you versus then just having the fabric and then you have to open the back up, shift, shift, shift until it's just right. So at least the bungee gives you that extra little wiggle room. It might be super tight if you have a little extra weight on you or in your pack, or it could be a little less tight if you have less stuff, but still fit just right. So also, I stitched only on the outer part, but also through the molly section on the outer, um, outside of the cummerbund to add a little more strength for where the threads go on. Then I made my fold underneath on the front end because on the other front, I have it folded over like this. I haven't taken this part off yet. So I did a fold over again, like I did previously, but now this clip is further back and the pouch can go all the way in there. And the uh, pouch is uh, folded a little further back as well to get me that nice 15 inch length that I'm looking for. So now the next part is to decide on how to attach the bottoms tops together. If I'm gonna have that little pouch, I think we have a pouch on the top, but also doing all that while keeping that opening in the inside and not, um, yeah, keeping the opening in the inside. So with my loop, I'm gonna be threading, stitching the bottom section first, and then along here to get my uh, little pocket made. And once that's done, that's why it's nice to be able to open it up, do a stitch on the inside instead of having to reach in, do some weird stuff like I had to do before, like going in between the molly. Stitch up here, and then leave my pouch open, stitch the bottom so it has um, the end secure so stuff can slide in. And after that, I can stitch here. Scratch that. Ah, this is why I like talking out loud and bouncing ideas off to technically, technically myself, but also to you. I want to get that situated. And then before I stitch all this back together or stitch the top, figure out where I'm going to put my pouches. So that'd be a little tricky because I won't be able to put the bungee on yet on either of them. Unless I, I guess I could put the bungee on the back side. One reason I wouldn't want to do the bungee on the back is we have the molly right here. So if I do bungee that way, it's already going to be inside my pouch. It's not going to be something I'm going to be attaching anything to. It gives that extra strength through these molly loops, which are more heavy duty than the. So I was stuck with a uh, orange, red, had to double stitch this. I have got lazy and didn't pull out all the orange. That was the previous stitching. Then got a little blue and a little orange here. But at least on the outside, I got my white balls. Uh, white ball thread. Um, okay. So there we are with that one. So now this one is complete. And now I got to um, <laughs> fully disassemble this one and do all the same shit I did here onto here. That was like six hours. Uh, I really need a sewing machine. I really want one. Hook me up, please. I need an industrial style sewing machine, man. It's gonna make me crazy. All right, on to the next one. See you in a bit. So, this is the first rendition that I tried. A little pouch. A little recap as well. So we got a little pouch here. Had the uh, clip stitched on the outside here. And there was more done to that previously, but I started taking it apart. So this, so far, is the finalized, what I did yesterday. I'm trying to remember what I had to do yesterday. Um, move the clip back so that on our, our um, front panel, trying to move this properly, this section can slide under here a bit, allow us to clip on like so, with this extra folded underneath. Why do we want that? At least for my case, most soft side panels are 15 inches long, I think five inches wide, or five or six, five and a half, I gotta look up. So having to go under gives us about 15, about 16 inches of total length. But I do have, the other part of the mod that I did was I stitched in Velcro right here on the end. I was going to stitch all the way down, but I decided having this section of having this section open allows me to access the eyelets for the bungee. I did cut the bungee in half, like so. Previously, I had six inches of stretch. Kind of made a uh, quick knee jerk reaction. Oh, I'll chop it, and I was like, oh, why'd I do that? But it works out because now it's in half. It has three inches of stretch, less adjustability but less material having to go all the way in and get in the way. I probably should have left it at six inches, but here we are. <laughs> also with the Velcro, I did square strips here of the hook, uh, the scratchy part, and then the loop on the top full run. That way when my string is, the uh, 
length bungee string cord is looped through here, it's not going to catch on the Velcro that once would have been here and allows my bungee to stretch quite nicely and not get caught up. So I still have my pouch that will accept it. The, um, the soft armor plates, if I put that on there in the Velcro enclosure, keeps it nice and secure. Another good thing too is keeping it open like this and be able to access, this is going to be in the back uh, closed up. So even if the Velcro doesn't completely seal, even just the edges will be plenty enough to keep the um, soft plate in there or soft armor. So I had to completely open this up to get my stitching done much easier and it comes off with a quick disconnect. I decided to keep the uh, little pouch on the front because I had to do the loop over to shorten up the overall length. And then, so, oh, here we go. I haven't fully opened this one up, trying to get a good step by step of what happened yesterday. Like I said, it was between five to six hours and I did not want to have my camera running that long and it'd be a whole ton of editing and pause, start, pause, start. So having to do the rundown, otherwise I'll go insane trying to edit all that footage. This is day three. Um, let's see. So I had it completely opened up, had my loop made here, fitted underneath, proper fit, made my measurements, clipped here because it was a clamshell. So I had to stitch the bottom part, um, two pieces of material, sandwich it together, stitch that. And then once I had the amount I wanted, I had to fold it over, clip it, and then, oh, here's the bottom. On the bottom, I stitched along here and then looped around here to make that enclosure. <clears throat> and then, um, actually this end was already stitched before I did the bottoms because it is part of the loop. So yeah, I did the loop over, stitched the bottom, then stitched, um, that's right, yeah, stitched from the back material onto this one. But while the flap was open, I stitched it through the back fold. So the threads no longer go through both pieces. So I can get the material all the way up here. So this back part is attached to this part of the material up here though, of course. And then same thing with the, uh, the clasp. It's only attached on the front where the molly is and doesn't go all the way through. So we can fit our panel all the way down without having this part sandwiched and not use a pole of this location. So I made sure to get it um, nice and centered. So a plate will go in nicely here on the front. This can be adjusted up and down and then this will be kind of going angle if we adjusted it different ways. Oh, uh, what next? All right. So I have kept the inner pouch for the side plates. And what I did uh, previously, well, of course I took it completely off. Um, that was annoying. Little trick as well when you're taking off these things, uh, the nylon attachments or threading, get that lighter singe the loose parts. You don't want to torch it, just singe you'll see it kind of melt down and with gloved hands kind of pat it down and might be able to see, might not, but a lot of them are singed nicely so the threads aren't going to come out on me. I still got to restitch through it, put it on, but it keeps the material from flopping off and coming off and then you just have several pieces of material flopping around with openings and crap that you can miss. So I had that off and also had this layer opened up, you know, like, uh, like a book opened up, found out my measurements, held it up on my side, clipped it onto here with uh, using clips to keep everything in place and then found out the perfect support where it's going to cover my obliques and my sides for the plate to hit the proper point. As you can, might be able to see, this is the old stitching and here's the new. So we had to make roughly a two inch offset or shift it um, forward this way in order to, for it to be in the proper spot. Otherwise I'd have a big gap up uh, further towards the front plate area. So <clears throat> sorry for the angles and all that. Actually, ah, there we go, a little bit better. So with it opened up, had to stitch, um, once the front part was folded over and stitched, I decided to start on this side because that gives me my nice line. I knew that this needed to be right next to this one. So I stitched top down, then over and then up. The reason for that was I can make sure it's nice and vertical. It's not sh going to shift on me. And then as I was going down, making sure that my material wasn't shifting up or down, this wasn't cockeyed at all, because that will happen possibly if you start angling your needle through. I would recommend wearing some uh, gloves kind of like these. And my work actually used these, so um, ordered some online because they work so great there because they have the rubber dipped grip, semi-breathable, um, can loop clasp, and they work great when using big tools at work. And then I'm like, you know what? These would be great at home. Ordered a box of them, uh, work nicely, but it gives you that added dexterity because you're forcing your needle through multiple thick layers. So your hands are gonna get tired and you don't wanna prick yourself. I had to be careful because um, these do push through a bit. So if you have better layers of uh, protection on the glove and then the rubber stuff, we still have dexterity, that's good too. But um, forcing through, also when you're going through material like this and it gets really sticky, really give that needle just a little wiggle 
as you're pushing through a little pressure, a little pressure, because once I got to stitching the Velcro, um, the glue will get onto the thread and the needle, and it's even harder to get through. And I think I broke two, yeah, I broke two needles last night trying to get in and, ah, what the, f yeah, and that can be dangerous. So if you do break your needles uh, while stitching your sewing needles, I should clarify, so I don't get demonetized, I think I'm talking about other types of needles. Uh, anyway, um, to use tape, tape them up, like duct tape, scotch tape, fold over, and then toss in the trash that way. Uh, garbage peep, uh, garbage folks picking it up, or if it falls out of the trash or whatever, you're not going to have uh, needle pieces sticking around to hurt somebody. Um, yeah, so that said, thick stitches. So once the pouch was on, like I mentioned, I did so um, side, 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 only one flap of material. Then I waited to make sure that I knew what I was doing, as in the plan, so I could get this part stitched on first. I ended up stitching it to the um, soft side because I didn't want to mess up the um, molly web and have to stitch through it. And then decided, um, that was it. When I was doing the Velcro, I actually I did Velcro second to last and then stitch around the rest. Uh, with the Velcro, I used, uh, one sec. I used this Velcro, the uh, stretched uh, Strenco two inch black adhesive fasteners, they call it. it. Has the hook in the loop and it has actually a very strong glue on it. Um, when I was doing my setup, I actually glued down the full strip of the hook and the loop, set it off to the side, you know, just put it on, just push, 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 uh, let it sit for a while. And then I realized when I was lining the hook and the stretch material up that it was catching pretty well on the, on the hook part of the Velcro and dawned on me. And this was after hours and hours of working on this stuff on and off that with the string too, it could catch and tear and cause issues. So I was like, oh, that's not good. Okay, let's fix this now. So I already was going to stitch it, but the glue was holding really good. So I stitched my uh, side pieces on after I put this here. Okay, got lined up. I know my they're not quite even. I was a little off on placement. It was late. So I stitched these on. And then I was trying to pull off the center, and it was sticky as all hell. It was not wanting to come off. So I had to do a little tool, wiggle, 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 try to get it in. Uh, and then make a little cut here and then cut down. Anyway, it was really sticky and held really well. Um, but decided to just make two pieces here. I could have done the same up here, but it looks kind of nice with the full Velcro. And later on, if I don't want to use the bungee anymore, I could actually make a double-sided uh, Velcro section, the you know, one loop, it would be a loop matching this side and a hook matching this side to make an extender and could do it at different sizes or uh, one that I can go further out, closer in. I actually just found that idea, so that's a good one later on if this doesn't work. So I'll have to come back and review that because I just had that idea on the spot. Um, all right, I'm bouncing all over the place. My apologies. Um, so I did this section. Stitch this on, double stitch on the interior. That's right. As you can see, now I have white thread. It's actually not regular thread. It is dental floss. So for all of you that don't know, dental floss works as a great thread. Um, since it's waxed coated, it's not going to um, <clears throat> deteriorate with water. It's much more sturdy. And since we're using a sturdy material, um, it will hold much better. And the wax helps slide through until you get all that gooeyness. And that's actually where I started breaking needles was trying to stitch through the uh, Velcro. So after all that, I got the Velcro on, I got my pull tabs on, and the pouch is almost stitched all the way. I decided I'm ready to go. It has a good length. Put that on the belt. Okay, good length. That's when I started uh, stitching. Also stitched along here to keep that flap down because it was Velcro down. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. And I went and did squares between the molly webbing so that way I didn't have to try to go underneath the uh, molly loops, which is a real pain in the butt to do. So this works well because now there's actually a square surface area stitched in. So if one section pulls up, it's not going to tear the whole thing off. So then <clears throat> I went from the back side on up. Since I already stitched the Velcro, I only stitched it here so that way I can open it up as you've been seeing, which I already just got all the threads taken off again of the second carrier, not carrier, um, cummerbund section. Get my thread or dental floss ready to go. A little trick, feed through. Once it's through, hold on to this end and keep pulling so this part doesn't come off of your needle. Um, so the measurements I want to recreate from this one to this one will be my loop. So measure from here, it's about three and a quarter inches. Come here, make that same measurement, three and a quarter inches. Since I have it fully separated up into that uh, point where my loop is, I made notice that the uh, clip is a little further back, as well as when I make my loop, I'm only stitching it to this part that's in my uh, right hand. It looks like my left in the video because of the camera angle. I keep forgetting that the face 
camera. Flip flop snuff. So I gotta work on that, my apologies. But at least I can get the good camera view while filming. All right, getting sidetracked like usual. So flip over, double check my <clears throat> three and a quarter right there. And then what I like to do is since it's separated like here, I'll do a first locking stitch by going through, back through and back through again. But you want those corners to be much stronger since they're more likely to get caught on stuff. So do maybe three or four passes right here on the top, making sure that everything is nice and flush together. Maybe do like four stitches where it's nice and tight. Double check my length. That way I know I didn't accidentally uh, push or move the material and have it off. It sucks, really sucks when you get all the way down and you notice it's cockeyed. When you measure after, you're like, oh, well, I just spent a half hour stitching this thing and it's uh, not right. I have to cut it and redo it. So it's good to do a couple stitch or a quick holding stitch, measure, do a few stitches, measure, make sure everything's nice and even because it's much easier, especially with the um, dental floss. There's the name for it because you can just go where your little loops are and just pull it out and then re-thread it through. Um, either through the eyelet or these things are great. Might be hard to see, but it's a little wire loop. You stick it through your eyelet, put the thread through and then pull through and it threads it really quick and easy. So if this thread pops off your needle, do that real quick, pop it back on, you're good to rock and roll again. All right, so that's gonna be my first stitch. Got my loop, stitch the top, only sewing to one side. I'm gonna just go all the way down, make sure that's good and leave the bottom open because eventually I'm gonna be folding the two pieces together and then stitching through the whole thing once I get this clip on, which is the next step, um, and then stitch it all the way through. So I'll go over this next part, so I'll have to stop and record again. So once that's stitched properly, get my next measurement, I like going from the clip or the tip to clip, because I know that's what's gonna be attaching here. Where these go on, don't really care as long as the uh, clip is up here and it's nice and tight. So my next one would be about an inch, inch and a quarter. So I might fold this flat, inch and a quarter, line it up nicely, do my uh, little holding stitch on the top, maybe do a holding stitch, get it in place, measure, cut the thread, go down here, measure, holding stitch, uh, possibly on both corners, so I know it's in place, and then go back and do the two rows of stitching to, because you want this to have real good strength, because that's what's gonna be pulled uh, consistently when you don and off, or put on, take off. So you want a good, um, good amount of stitching right here, and it'll be on only one side, so that's why I'm not stitching the uh, all four, or, I guess two layers and then another folded over, so that'd be like four layers. That's why I'm not going all the way through because I want that pouch for the soft armor if I use that. And just stitching these onto the top and the molly webbing will add that extra layer um, to keep it from tearing as easy. So that's my next steps and how I'm attacking this portion. And I'll be back once that's all done for the next step. See you in a bit. Alrighty, so the other side is finally done. And now I have the two matched together with these cinched up fairly tight, butt end to butt end. So just uh, woven through, tie it up, and then we close this section. Try not to overlap them. And voila! Got our two sections mated together. With them mated together, and also get this out of the way. So in finale, we have the bottom sealed up nicely. We have two little pouches on the left. And where's the other side? There we go. Two little pouches on the right. Put that back over. Get our carrier set up. Currently no plates. Let's see. Make sure I get this in proper. Put that around. All right, our pouches are up. Let's feed this on through the back. Like so. Got the plates in there. It's a little easier to just kind of fold it up a little bit. Like so. You can also do the tying with a halfway out on both sides. Alright, so that's there. What's this kitchen on? Oh, the strap. Alright, so I'll pop this thing on and try it out in a moment. Alrighty, so I got it on and this thing is fairly tight. So the dimensions are good on how it's set up. It is very snug, which I am digging because once the plates are in, we're going to have a little more expansion on the whole thing. So we got room to adjust. That's awesome. Um, tricky thing is, I might have miscalculated the extension on here, that loop, so the soft armor can go all the way up on both sides. Um, they're sticking out a little bit, but I might be able to pull off moving the um, front clip further back to make up for that room. And then I realized I can make uh, the rear tighter on the uh, cumberbund where those straps are woven in. 
So I'm gonna put stuff back in, try it out again, and be back. All right, here we go. It looks like the mod was a success. It is nice and snug, with more room for adjustment. I did move the uh, front panel clips back a little bit to get that little extra flap if I were to be running soft armor underneath in the cover bun. But it's nice and sturdy. Can't really notice the stitching, but on a side plate right in there, it is right over the vitals. It just about overlaps to the front plate, just about a slight gap, really hard to tell on the back as well. Slight gap, very slight gap, and in the front, just a little bit right here. But if I had soft armor, it would be going from the entirety from the front all the way to the rear. Then they got the nice hard stuff protecting those vitals here. Um, looking at the uh, front facing camera, I might be able to lower the cover bun slightly if I slide the back down or even on the front, move the clips just just a little bit. But um, I can move my arms all the way down, so that's no problem right there. But um, I am very happy with this mod. It, it is snug. This thing... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> thing a little heavy. But um, yeah, it is super snug. I mean, I can stretch it out just a little bit because we kept the... Uh, elastic so by moving groove it has a just maybe half an inch or an inch of flex pushing forward which is not bad so it's not like super tight it's kind of giving me a good old bear hug so oh man all that effort paid off worked out and these clips awesome work just like how they're supposed to and to reapply it's a little tricky with that extra flap and having it semi-tight trying to do it by feel there we go. You can just do it by feel instead of having to look. Yeah, I'll look on this side. Right there. Actually, maybe from down below up is easier. All right, there we go. Ugh. Yeah. So you can actually engage them from the bottom or the top, depending on how you feel on the setup, either click down or bring them over and down. So I'll play with that, donning and doffing. But yeah, for a $60 plate carrier, this is not bad at all. I'm trying to get that a there is a few more mods I gotta do is I don't like the plastic uh, safety belt clip that goes underneath. Having to do clip and clip and then put on too many steps. I wanna just slap these on. The other nice thing or a technique, I'll do that side. It, oh, that's another mod. As you can see, the clip on this design is back here. What I might end up doing is going either keeping the plastic clip because it seems pretty sturdy so far um move it up here i'd have to take off the webbing from the vest here stitch the clip in up top hmm actually i might have a few other ways of doing so but it would be nice to be able to disconnect from here so if i put the uh carrier on over one this shoulder head through clip and then clip actually i'll clip that back on it's kind of comfy honestly i'm very surprised for a uh, 60 65 dollar carrier and i think can't really quote me on this right now. I'll have to find the quote. Um, the, I'll have to find the name of that. But the clips were an accessory. So those are maybe 20, 25 bucks. Totally worth it. So overall, between the sewing of the uh, thread and the um, dental floss for thread and the sewing kit, unless you already have the kit. So about 65 for the carrier, another 20 for these clips. So I'm trying to do math. Well, I'm really tired. That was a lot of work. $80 to $85 for a very comfy form fit, has the side plates. Um, actually came with those pouches with it, which fit perfectly. You can do six by six or six by eight plates. So that's awesome. Now I have the option for soft armor in there. Everywhere else I looked, you could find ones with clips, but then it'd have a color bun that was just stretchy elastic with either mag holders. Um, then you also had ones with the clips that did not have the pouch. A lot of them did not have a pouch for hard armor. So it only came with soft armor, then you have to get another pouch and attach it on there. So that'd be extra. And all the ones that were like, I'd say 80% of what I wanted, or 70%, or maybe even 90% that I wanted, were in the $330 range. The other thing is, I could not find any that had this setup that I could pop on these clips um, that could hold the 11 by 14 plates. Nobody offers them. This was a awesome one-off. There's maybe like six companies or six models that say they can accept the 11 by 14. And a lot of them didn't even have a cummerbund. I was actually looking at a replacement cummerbund to run. I can't remember the company's name, but 
just itself, no tax, no shipping, was already 130 bucks. That's not too bad because the cummerbund is a major component of your carrier because that's what's going to be holding it together. Side attachments, side plates, soft armor. That's how you make your adjustments unless you just use the straps. So 130 is not too bad, but it would have, I think it would need um, side pouch holders. It might have had them on their website. Probably because I've been looking at a whole bunch of stuff, seeing what I can do, how I can modify, what I can use for my benefit. I think the ones that had, could hold a 6x8 were maybe 45, 50 bucks. That were kind of nice, but they're molly on. Um, so you had to have either molly on the inside or the outside, and then you lose purchase area for whatever you want to attach here. So going this route, I'm just ecstatic that it worked. And it's not, not the super comfiest, just because these straps are a little tight, uh, not a whole lot of padding, which I think I have some shoulder pads coming shortly so i'll try those out and see how the feel is and get back to you on that the other issue is these straps are really close to my head or my head's just fucking really big or something so whenever i take it off it kind of scrapes the ears a little bit but with the new pads i think it, they might fit a little bit better so future possible mods is putting the clip up front or doing a different type of clip up front either cover buckle or a quick quick attack uh quick just quick disconnect i can't talk right now it's been a very long couple days Doing this thing um and then possibly very possibly i don't want to do it but it might be something i need to do <clears throat> is unstitch the um the webbing here as to the vest and shift it out um about um half an inch on both sides or maybe an inch on both sides or just angle them a little bit more so they're on the side of my traps but other than having it like scrape my head when it comes off trying to give it a better angle it fits nicely right on my traps so if I do some more working on building my traps, it's not going to mess with me that much. Even actually if I bulk up my traps, it might help separate the straps more and be able to pull it off easier. But with that said, thank you for joining me. I might be uh, doing a few more breakdowns on this, get some names of the product, where I got it, how much, all that other stuff. I'm starting to ramble again. Thank you for stopping by and hopefully this will be out soon. And keep on creating, keep on fabricating and stay awesome. See you on the next one.